Hello, I'm Morris Kohansky, Wilderness Living Skills and Survival Instructor, specializing in the boreal forest. The situation here is that I want to review the really uh, important points that I have picked up over my career on what a pack, uh, a device for packing, a backpack sort of thing, means to carry a burden. We have a DVD on uh, what all the things you can do with the stick where there is a pretty extensive construction of the pack frame. Uh, this is called the Roycroft pack frame and, and Tom Roycroft uh, uh, somehow uh, found out about the way Koreans used to carry their produce to market and based on that he came up with a pack frame that was simplified and quite effective. I did not have a commercial backpack for many years, but when the thrift stores and the Value Village stores started to open, I acquired a number of packs that way, but I never went out of my way to buy a new one because I found that this more or less met my needs. Through using this, I came to realize that I could make myself as comfortable as I wanted to be. If you're uncomfortable with any a type of pack, there's two reasons. One, you don't know how to adjust it, or two, it doesn't have any means to adjust. Now the sticks here, to you individually, no matter who you are, elbow to fingertip basically for the short bar and armpit to fingertip for the two longer ones and you'll end up having a pack frame that suits your stature, your size. We have this particular one uh, is emphasizing the kit where the pack straps come and the strings and so on packaged in your survival kit and when you need a pack frame then you can construct it. When you're evacuating somebody, you, you need pack frames. When you're doing many things, the use of a pack frame that is built on the spot that can allow you to get the job done has a lot of merit. Here we have pack straps that the harder they are, the better, next to being carved out of wood. Uh, the very stiff, very hard webbing is what you want. Basically two fingers to two and a half fingers wide. If it's wider, it'll fold and there'll be a centralized pressure point that'll develop. If it's spongy and padded, it is the worst type of pack frame I've ever encountered. A pack strap like this one, which is hard and firm, distributes the weight uh, far better than a spongy pack frame, which will create a central uh, line of pressure when you're trying to carry things. The pack that has the strap coming from one point, that is the superior. Any other way where there's a space between the two there, from my perspective, that does not add to the quality of the pack strap. If you start spreading it over here, the strap wants to work off its shoulders and it, uh, there are many things that come in where your own worst enemy when you attempt to uh, provide points of attachment that have any space between them. When you put on a pack, you want to be able to cinch up your straps so that your shoulders are forced back. And if they're forced back to the point where you're uncomfortable, if you get used to that, you're going to outpack the people who are using such loose pack straps that they're sort of hunched forward without their shoulders being drawn back. With the bar being elbow to fingertip, when you pass through trees, you likely will uh, not get jammed between them because basically it's about the width of your back. These corners that we have here can be used for pulling a toboggan in a way where the normal pack frame won't provide it. Here we have and a, a kind of a luxury in that you've got these devices to speed up the loading of the pack frame. Now, one thing you like is to be able to load something very, very quickly. Now, the pack frames in particular are very important in evacuating people because you can reduce the number of people that are carrying a stretcher. Uh, probably four people might do a passable job where normally using their arms it takes five times more uh, with people to be able to achieve the same thing. To load the pack, we will quickly um, see if we can throw it together, make sure that we have the pack oriented properly. I've got these strips here that I got somewhere, which today I choose to use them for my, my pack cover on account of the fluorescent orange and the whatever. When it comes to visibility, fluorescent blue is today found to be one of the more 
visible type of I have no idea what these are but they showed up at a surplus store for next to nothing and they caught my attention so now the whole notion with regard to the this type of pack frame is the bulge that's created in the triangle so your first non your non compressibles go down your clothing rather than your bag and if you got sleeping bag it helps to pack it tightly so that you don't have problems with decompression. It is the pack softening on account. Here is a, a bit of a simulation. So we kind of show that there are many covers that we put on. Now this is a bit unusual in that I'm using is three components to, to extemporize the cover. And now lashing your pack frame, you will eventually, lashing to your pack frame, you will eventually evolve your own methods of doing it. The simplest pack frame doesn't have those toggles. Yeah. If there's anything crushable, it has to uh, be taken out of the, the put to the outside. Now we have the two crossings. Now I go to a toggle. And the toggle allows me to access the. Uh, and you have to get used to how to use the toggle, rather than rings that require a person to uh, thread everything through. The toggle allows you to... And you can be very fast in the amount of time that a person takes to stuff things into a bag. You are long, long gone. might make a lash cord that uh, is a clothesline at other times. Although the toggle gives you some advantages, you got to learn how to accommodate the toggle. So your lash cord might be a utilitarian type type thing. So it might be a lot longer than you need. So we do some winding. And when you finish, you always finish in my way of thinking with a sheet bend on a bolden so that you can I got so much extra string today, we'll take it once more. But at any rate, you learn how to lash your load on so tightly so that the bulge that's created and there's forms of lashing called a diamond hitch, but you have to work those things out for yourself. I can create a lash, but this bulge is what keeps the, the, the uh, bar from rubbing. And because there's no space between the frame, like a lot of pack frames, they want a space to let air circulate. You will sweat more, but you will be in a position to carry a heavier load. And you'll learn how to put a pack frame on by facing the bottom away, swinging it, crossing your arms.
Swing it up to your shoulder. And you'll notice that the pack strap slides at its point of attachment, which under some circumstances is highly desirable, and in others you might choose to prevent it from sliding. But it means that if it slides up at the point of attachment, it'll juggle to your preferred uh, length of straps. Now I can take and shorten these straps and do a number of other things, but uh, you discover you have so many alternatives that the person who knows how to build a pack frame will look at the circumstances at hand and build the pack frame, just like the ski shoe is built to meet the needs you perceive of the moment. Whereas the pack frame you buy in the store, you gotta live with whatever it provides because there isn't very much you can change. And I have taken some pretty heavy burdens with this type of a, um, arrangement. And I was as happy at the end of the day as people with very expensive pack frames. I pulled that Coleman canoe all by myself, setting up camp without this pack frame. I don't think I would have ever done it. 